On the phone, it is a pleasure to welcome to the program Becky Bond. She is the VP of uh, Credo Mobile and the political director of Credo Action. Did I get that right, Becky? Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm the political director at Credo. I'm also a vice president. I'm also president of Credo Super PAC, which is my newest and most favorite title. All right. Well, great. I mean, let's, that's a great place to start because um, one of the things that I know that, uh, the, that, that, that Credo, the PAC, was involved in was targeting uh, specific House races, uh, Tea Party races. It, tell us about that. Well, so it, it's a funny thing, Sam. You know, Credo, at Credo, we believe, like, like you and your listeners believe, that there should be no corporate money in politics. But when we saw what happened in 2010 with all the money from the Koch brothers and uh, money raised by Karl Rove sweeping in the most radical extremist Republicans uh, that we've seen in my lifetime in the House, we knew that we had to do something. So uh, Credo Action, we have 3 million members, and, and we asked them, should Credo form a super PAC to defeat some of the most extreme Republicans in the House, the guys that were trying to take away birth control and redefine rape? Um, the guys that denied the science behind climate uh, climate change, and they overwhelmingly said, yes, let's form a super PAC and let's defeat some of these guys. So we targeted 10 of the most vulnerable and extreme Tea Party Republicans in the House incumbents, uh, and we um, and we set up an amazing grassroots volunteer field operation, storefront offices in every district. Um, we hired organizers. We recruited volunteers, and we helped defeat five of our 10 incumbents in an amazing uh, an amazing race. If I had told you a year ago that uh, with a few hundred thousand dollars, Credo would set up an operation in Allen West District, and despite his raising 13 million bucks, spending 13 million bucks to defend his seat, that we could make the difference in that race and turn him into former Congressman Allen West, you would think I was crazy, but that's exactly what we did. And you, uh, some of the other highlights, uh, Dan Lundgren, which is a big one in California, uh, Joe Walsh, in Illinois, I have uh, mixed feelings just because we got we used to have so much tape from that guy. Uh, I could I could build any <laughs> daily show off of uh, some of the ridiculous things that he was um, espousing. Uh, but uh, nice to see at least those uh, three go. And it was the the other one was Kravak in um, Minnesota and um, and, Fra- and Frank Ginta in New Hampshire. Right. Uh, and Frank Ginta it was he was a Tea Party freshman who actually came from his local Tea Party organization. And was elected in 2010 as a freshman, and was the most anti-woman member of Congress. Uh, and we ran a really effective operation up there. Uh, he is now going to be former Congressman Frank Ginta, and we re-elected one of the most anti-war members of Congress from the former Congress, Carol Shea Porter. So we're really proud of that work. Credo members had a big hand in that race, and we're really excited about seeing the seeing that guy out the door. Now, I guess I should have said up front that, I mean, I, I, I did before we brought you on, but obviously uh, Credo is uh, sponsoring this program. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, from my perspective, I mean, I've told my audience this multiple times now, but um, yours is an organization that I have always had uh, great admiration from. And of all of the, 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 the groups, the organizations out there that are uh, mobilizing, um, one of the things that I think is most impressive about Credo is how independent and uh, you guys are. So, I mean, it's not just a question of you're targeting uh, with, the, with the PAC uh, Tea Partiers, but you guys fight for, I mean, I don't, I'm obviously, I'm blowing a little smoke here, but not really. I mean, it, you guys fight for um, real progressive values. You manage to do it in a way that is, I think, distinct from other groups. And part of that has to do with, with the way that you guys are funded. Will, will you just tell us, you know, the, the, evil, the evolution of Credo from, from working assets uh, to, to Credo, how you guys fund what you do, and uh, what are the actions that you take outside of the pack as well? Sure. That's a great question. It, it, you know, much like you, Sam, when you're outside of the mainstream media, you can actually really speak truth to power, and it's the same thing with uh, Credo and how we fund our activism. Uh, we're really a social change organization that instead of going to big donors and asking for money, we run a phone company. Uh, and the proceeds and the revenue from that phone company funds our activism. So we only have to answer um, to our conscience when we go out there and run campaigns. We don't have anyone, any donor saying, oh, don't talk about that right now, or 
we can't hold the president accountable because we need to reelect him. We get to go out there and we get to fight for choice. We get to fight to stop the wars. We get to fight to hold Wall Street accountable no matter what anyone says. Um, and the more that we work to be successful and say what we believe and hold uh, people in power accountable no matter what party they're in, that's the more people want to participate in our activism and become customers of Credo Mobile. We started about 25 years ago, and we were started by a group of progressive economists uh, who just didn't want to raise money, but they wanted to make sure that great progressive groups, not just do-gooder groups, but progressive groups that were fighting for choice, fighting for justice in Central America, could have funding, um, a, a revenue stream um, that would um, be independent. Of All these corporations were funding bad things, but there were no corporations funding good things. So they, they founded a really good company called Working Assets. Uh, and for a long time, uh, Working Assets uh, was a long-distance company, and many of you may know it as that. Um, and one of the great things about Working Assets was that just every month when you paid your bill, a portion of the money that you gave to the company went to great groups. And over the years, um, we've become we're the largest corporate contributor to Planned Parenthood. We've given over a million dollars to the Rainforest Action Network. We fund lots of great groups through their phone service. Now, as long distance goes away, um, we decided that what we needed to really do is be a mobile phone company because fewer people had long distance, whatever it was getting mobile phones. And so when we changed, um, uh, moved into the mobile business, we changed our name to Credo Mobile, uh, and we started doing the fierce kind of activism uh, and uh, and getting our customers to switch their long distance to Credo Mobile, and that's where we are today. And so let's let's talk about some of. I mean, um, the. I mean, how does it break down with? With Credo Mobile, um, spends part of its profits in supporting uh, these different groups, and you can uh, people can check it out uh, by heading uh, to uh, credomobile.com forward slash majority, and there you can see all the different um, actions that are taking place, uh, or, or where what Credo has supported through the years. Very transparent uh, in that respect. What are the, the specific? <laughs> It's really an interesting model because it, and it's not even just the profits. What we do is we give a portion of our of our revenue. So literally every time you know you pay your phone bill, if you're a Credo Mobile customer, part of that money goes to the progressive nonprofits that we're uh, supporting, whether it's Planned Parenthood or whether it's Doctors Without Borders or whether it's Democracy Now!, the money goes, no matter whether we're making a profit or not, a portion of your phone bill goes directly to those groups. We also run, you know, where other companies are running marketing campaigns, you know, we just have as part of, uh, as part of Credo, we have a, a, a big team that works to organize our customers and our Credo Action members to do progressive activism. And so um, where some companies have marketing expenses that would be ads, um, what we do is we plow the money from those phone bills back into one of the best online to offline progressive organizing teams in the country. Um, and that's what made Credo Super PAC possible. That's what um, you know made our makes our campaign to stop the Keystone XL pipeline um, run. It's it's the it's the it's the money that comes in from the phone bills that pay for that. So not only can we run these amazing activism campaigns, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners have been a part of, but we also have given over seventy million dollars to uh, great progressive nonprofits. And again, like I said, you know we are the number one corporate contributor to Planned Parenthood. That's something that we're that we're really proud of, and that's something that the customers make possible. You know, on uh, on Monday, I was interviewing Digby from the blog Hullabaloo, and we were we were talking about how this is a fairly unique time for people of our ilk, uh, those who have been working on the outside, trying to agitate and put uh, and and gain some leverage uh, with House members in the uh, Democratic caucus, um, with the president, and now that the president has been reelected. This is really a, a key time and one, I think, where outside groups are empowered. She mentioned um, uh, Credo, among other uh, progressive organizations that are really trying to leverage people power to, uh, to, to force and stiffen the, uh, stiffen the spines of particularly uh, the, the Democratic caucus in the House as we enter into this uh, fiscal cliff Whatever, however you want to brand it, fiscal austerity bomb, uh, this uh, potential grand bargain, uh, the debt ceiling fight. What are you guys doing uh, right now in terms of? Because I know that back in even as early as March, you guys were pressuring Stanley Hoyer uh, and 
exposing his position where he's putting things like Medicare and Social Security on the table in, in negotiations with the Republicans. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Like, like you and like Digby, Digby, we believe in an outside model of power. We think change comes from the outside. We don't think that if we walk into the office of Sonny Hoyer on Capitol Hill, you know, that we'll be able to make an inside deal and, and he'll fight for everything that we believe in, like no cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits. We believe that the politicians in Washington, D.C., whether Republicans or Democrats, they only do the things, most of them, that we make them do because they're under enormous pressure from the right. And so when you look at a phone company like AT&T, they're one of the biggest campaign contributors to Congress, and they're certainly the biggest contributor to the members of the Tea Party Caucus. What we do, instead of giving money to right-wing politicians, is we organize millions of people um, to speak out at moments like this where we're facing this fiscal bluff. And, you know, with Stoney Hoyer and also with Chris Van Hollen, you know, when these guys make comments in the news, they'll say things like, you know, I think we should consider raising the Social Security retirement age. Or Chris Van Hollen uh, recently, um, who's the head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, he recently said, yeah, I think, it, you know, I, I personally am not necessarily for cutting benefits, but I think that benefits for Medicare and Medicaid, they ought to be on the table. Uh, and when these guys say things like this, we immediately shoot out an email um, to our Credo Action members uh, in their district, and we say, we want you to give Stoney Hoyer a phone call like we did in March, and we say, give him a phone call and tell him that you are absolutely opposed to this being on the table at all. We generated about 5,000 calls, not just from Hoyer's district, but because he's part of the leadership from across the country um, to him saying, just, you cannot talk about putting this stuff on the table. Recently, Chris Van Hollen, just a couple of weeks ago, um, said something about um, this all ought to be on the table in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. And we had a bunch of people from his district call in. And let me just tell you the angry call we got at Credo HQ from his uh, chief of staff saying that we mischaracterized it. And we just, we read back the quote, did he say this? And he's like, that's not what he meant. And we said, you know, and they said, stop misinforming your people. And we said, you know what? We think that Chris Van Hollen should make a public statement saying that he would absolutely not vote for any bill that would contain cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits. And they said, well, we're not going to make that statement. And then we said, well, we're going to keep those phone calls coming. So it's our job to make people in power uncomfortable. And the elites in Washington, D.C., on both sides are just way too uh, apt to give away things that people in their district hold dear, like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits. So we're, you know, we're we're with our people, and we're going to fight to the end on this. And you know, we don't believe in compromise as a place where you start in these arguments. We believe that you say what you want to win, and then you fight for it, and then you see where you are at the end. You don't compromise at the beginning, and and, that, and that's what we do uh, as a company, and that's what our members want to do. And we're, it's our job to help fight for uh, the progressive values, not get in the back room and, and, and make a terrible compromise um, uh, where the people that voted into office have no power at all. I got to say that not only do I love that uh, your, you, your uh, credo uh, of folks were able to force uh, Van Hollen's office to call you, but I love the fact that you can talk about it. Because so often, I mean, this is this is you know this is sort of the thing that I've been trying to communicate to people is that so often with these groups they'll do an action like this they will get that call and they can't talk about the fact that they get that call because it, somehow it's that relationship is where the leverage is but here it is just it is literally you're putting their feet under the fire and it doesn't make a difference if they know that you're talking about it because it continues to put it com compounds uh, that pressure and that's one of the things I really appreciate now we just got a couple minutes here so I got a couple uh, questions in terms of the phone service uh, but also we've had great great response from uh, our listeners already uh, and ranging from Sam, you're a bad marketer because you didn't tell us that uh, the Majority Report uh, promo, people get a $350 uh, credit to buy out our existing contract. I'm going to do a better job with that. Um, one of the things that people wanted to ask me about was, one, uh, are you guys going to get the iPhone? Right now, you're, you're talking to me on a, um, a Samsung Galaxy. Sounds great. Uh, some people wanted to know about the iPhone. What's uh, a chance? <laughs> Well, so uh, so right now we don't have the iPhone. I do not know what the future holds. You know, right now I'm talking to you on the Galaxy S3, which is an which is an awesome phone. Um, uh, uh, you know, you probably know as much as I do if you read in the newspaper about what's going on with Apple and supply chain and all that right. kind of stuff. Personally, if we get the iPhone, uh, I'm going to stick with my Android Galaxy S3. 
in part because, first of all, it's a faster phone, and I think it's a better phone, but also because i become addicted to swipe. Now, I don't know if you're using People this, have told me that, <laughs> yes. Uh... So this is the iPhone doesn't have, and, and uh, someone in D.C. Who's, a, who's an activist challenged me. He said that he can write emails faster with one hand and swipe, or as fast with one hand on swipe uh, on public transit than he can at his keyboard uh, of his of his uh, of his of his MacBook, and mm. so I've taken up this challenge myself, and I think that the that the Galaxy S3 is an is, a, is an awesome phone, um, and uh, and also Android as an open source platform is one where there's actually more innovation uh, going into it. So so we're right now we don't have the iPhone. I don't know what the future holds, um, but I know that I'm sticking with my uh, with my Galaxy. All right, now I got to ask you uh, one other question that was brought up, and. Um, I, I ask this with the understanding that, you know, look, there's no there there's no perfect solution when you're talking about uh, commerce in some way to avoid, um, you know, uh, to get into a situation where everything is sort of perfectly aligned uh, with your values. But one of the the things that people asked about now, granted, AT and T is is given nearly a million bucks to uh, Tea Party candidates. I'm not, uh, which just is just sort of shocking in a way. Um, what, one of the things that people have br- brought up is that uh, the relationship with Sprint, which is the the network where Credo works on, is not unionized. Is that the case? What's the story with uh, Credo and unions? So the so the the only carrier that has some unionized workforce um, for for mobile is, is AT and T. Um, and you know it's 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 a really complex thing. First of all, we really encourage people to consider their values and the things that are most important to them when they. Um, when they spend any of their money, whether it's on their phone service or the food they eat, you know, um, for any of those things. So we really applaud your listeners for interrogating, you know, this mm-hmm. decision. Um, you know, it, it's it's really complicated. Um, uh, it's really complicated when you look at the record on if, if you care about labor issues. Credo supports the Employee Free Choice Act. Credo has been organizing our members in Indiana to fight the right wing uh, right to work power grab. Um, we've sent um, we've sent. Uh, out every email that's been asked of us by the AFL-CIO on this terrible Michigan power grab. Um, You know, AT&T was one of the top ten contributors to Scott Walker when he ran for governor in Wisconsin. Um, And AT&T is a top contributor to the Republican Governors Association, and AT&T obviously is the biggest giver to the Tea Party Caucus. Uh, Credo, again, you know, we support workers' rights. We fund groups like Jobs with Justice, the Farm Labor Organizing Committee, um, uh, we've worked with Unite Here and SEIU and AFL-CIO. When there is a labor fight, you know, we want to be there. We want to get our members engaged. Um, but it's true that Sprint is the, is, the, is the vendor that we use for our network, um, and Sprint doesn't have a unionized uh, workforce. And, you know, we support trade unionization. We support labor rights. Um, but, that is a, but that is a difference um, with AT&T. We think that the money that AT&T pours into the right wing, that the fact that AT&T is a top – um, supporter and help get elected, you know, Scott Walker in Wisconsin. We think these things outweigh the fact that some of their labor force is unionized, uh, and we believe that, that we have a very strong commitment to labor rights. And anyone in a labor organization that's actually worked with us on one of these issues, I think, would tell you, would, would, would tell you, you know, that uh, Credo is a strong supporter of labor rights. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, you know, uh, I, you know, it's it's it is a complicated thing. You're weighing different things, and um, you know, frankly, um, I it's the the work that you guys are doing. I think is uh, really, in many respects, unparalleled in terms of bringing this outside um, uh, outside force uh, to uh, to bear upon uh, our politicians and holding them accountable. And so, uh, I want to remind people. That you can go as a majority report listener, you get 40% off your monthly voice fee for the first year. You get a contract buyout credit up to 350 bucks, true unlimited data, all sorts of phones, smartphones, uh, stupid phones, I guess. I don't know what you call it. Uh, old school yeah. phones. Um, and I'm, I'm really, it's, it, it really, I, I feel great about this, uh, relationship, Becky, and I really appreciate what, uh, uh, Credo, uh, sponsoring the, the program. 
Well, we're huge fans of the Majority Report. This is exactly the kind of, you know, in-depth information about what's going on in Washington, D.C., in the states and the progressive fights that, that people, you know, don't have access to. And if, if we can help, you know, get more listeners for your show and help support your work, uh, it's just a really wonderful marriage of two great progressive forces. So we're really happy to be with you on the Majority Report. Great. Thank you. It's credomobile.com forward slash majority. Check it out, folks. You got to December 31st for the special, uh, this special offer. Becky, thanks so much for joining us.